Welcome to Around the Weird. Here's your host, the museum curator of the strange and unusual, Mr. Nothing. Thank you, Mysterious Voice, and welcome back to Around the Weird, a booktube channel where I talk about all the unusual and out-of-the-ordinary literature that I have found in my travels. Today, it is Short Story Tuesday, so I wanted to focus on some uh, uh, an exciting short story that I read recently, one that uh, really stood out to me, uh, and it is all about teenage angst. I am referring to Teenage Hate uh, by Leopolding Kaur, which comes from her short story collection, When Watched, uh, which was published in 2016. For those who don't know, Leopoldine Kaur uh, is an American author. I don't know too much about her. She seems to be a pretty new author. Um, her uh, getting her work published within the past 10 years. Uh, she uh, has a, um, a book of poetry published and she has this short story collection. I don't know if she has anything else published since 2016. Uh, it appears that she hasn't. But um, in addition to writing nonfiction and poetry and, and the short story collection, it appears that she's gotten some of her work published in um, other journals and literary magazines. So she seems to be doing pretty well for herself. Uh, and, uh, like I checked out this book from the local library. So, uh, very happy that I was able to stumble across her work, uh, cause I might not have done so otherwise. Um, because again, she's not like a really well-regarded author. And I think that's what Short Story Tuesday is all about. In addition to cataloging the more well-known authors, you know, being able to find these short stories or the short story collections from uh, lesser known authors and, and, and talking about their work too. Uh, and so without further ado, let's talk about Teenage Hate. I will do a little summary, a little bit of analysis, and we'll move on from there. So Teenage Hate focuses on Joan, Dennis, and their, uh, and their uh, teenage daughter, Cindy. Uh, both Joan and Dennis are concerned about uh, what is happening to Cindy. She uh, is a teenager and they're noticing that she is filled with a lot of hate and seems to be very... Uh, seems to dislike everything like uh one morning she comes down while her mom has made pancakes and she just reaches into a cereal box pulls out a fistful of uh cereal and eats that which is a very relatable feeling because i might have done that when i was a teenager and uh joan and dennis don't really know what to do about about cindy uh dennis has noticed that uh cindy is 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 changing from a girl into a woman and while he notes that he's able to avert his eyes which why would you why would you need to avert your eyes like the he notes that the entire neighborhood has begun to notice uh and uh it's it's a weird uncomfortable time for him but also probably for cindy as well uh and Joan also tries to connect. She tries to talk to her daughter about uh, a book that she's reading, Franny, Franny and, and Zoe by, um, by J.D. Salinger. Uh, but Cindy, Cindy doesn't seem to want to talk about that. She just says, get out of my room and, and Joan leaves. And Joan decides to, to go out to town, uh, initially thinking that she's going to walk away forever, but deciding, you know, she can't really do that. That life has to has to go on here and but as she's outside she's reflecting on how things don't really feel authentic and sometimes there's a lot of dis dissatisfaction with life she specifically notes that there's an artist painting um a, a building um at the park when uh there is a um someone who is dealing with addiction nearby and, and she's like why don't you paint that why don't you paint what's really happening here and um i don't think she ever really uh like figures anything out there but she eventually decides to go back home and there she sees that the book that she gave her daughter franny and zoe is on the kitchen table and she goes and takes it uh to um back to sydney where she is uh like she uh she notes that like there was a picture of her um in a bathing suit from the 1970s in there and they have a conversation about how you know things were a little bit different in the 1970s like things were all gaudy and and whatnot but uh, if you were dealing with depression, it, that it could have been a little bit overbearing, and they seem to have a moment of of connection there, uh, where the uh, like the the teenage kind of hate 
dissipates. Uh, but uh, Joan realizes this is only momentarily, so she decides to leave uh, leave Sydney in peace. And as Joan and Dennis are getting ready for bed that night, um, they 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 talk about uh, Sydney and how. Sydney and how things are a little better, but they also talk about their cats and how, uh, like, the cats yearn for freedom, but they keep them in their house, making them sort of weird gods. Uh, but and so, like, looking out the window is a lot like TV, and like, what a TV because there's a lot going outside. And I think it's supposed to be like a moment where you also think of Sydney in that moment and how, like, 18 is that is that window to the outside world, but it's going to take a while. And so, like, perhaps the parents are. Uh, weird overlords in in this situation but that's where the story ends there in terms of analysis there is uh, a little bit worth talking about in this story one of the big themes um, based on the title of the story is is teen angst sydney is or cindy is experiencing what most teens experience at that age i think everyone goes to that parent period where they can't really relate to their parents um, and the world is shifting around them. And if you put a bunch of teenagers together in high school, they're they're slowly going to hate one another. It's a weird moment in your life where, like, everything feels awful. Your body is changing. You're you're seeing the world in a different way. Uh, you're shedding your innocence, and it's it's a very you know, troubling time and you don't really know how to feel. For, for but for Sydney, this is very normal. But um, uh, I also think for Cindy that things are uh, like like the, things aren't quite normal that like maybe Cindy is is going through something else as well. And I think uh, Leopold Polding Core argues that this stems from not really understanding your your parents that uh, uh, like you see your parents in a different light once once you become a teenager when and you and you're capable of more complex thinking uh and she sees her parents and maybe they feel kind of inauthentic to her which is another point that i'll get to later um it it, it also um like doesn't help that joan and dennis were were teenagers once but they came from a broken home uh, like Joan was abused by her mother, like or, or hit from time to time, and Dennis w also seemed to be generally abused, um, even when he wasn't acting out or anything like that. Uh, so there seem to be a little bit of generational differences that maybe um, Joan and Dennis aren't fully equipped to be parents. They they weren't taught by their parents like good parenting behavior, so they've had to learn. And so maybe this is a, a learning experience with Cindy, um, but they also might. Uh, like this teen ang angst might also be picking up on the things that um, that are going on like around Cindy like she's seeing the world much like how Joan is seeing it and seeing it in a different light kind of will kind of make you angry and will kind of make you frustrated um, what, what's most important is how at the end of the story what, what I what I am um, what I grasp from the end of the story is how um, like Joan and Dennis note that the cats don't really have freedom like they want to be outside but they're forced to stay inside where their food is um, and if they go outside they might get sick and that might be what Cindy is, is dealing with at that point in time where she's slowly becoming an adult but it is a slow process and um, at this point in their life like Joan and Dennis might have a hard time relating to Cindy. So you're kind of trapped in this relationship with your parents and where you want to be free, but you're not quite able to be free in the eyes of the law. And so it's it's a real struggle. And I do like how Leopolding uh, like gets this point across. It's, it's a very interesting kind of way to describe like those those teenage years. Because, you know, most people talk about the angst, but they don't talk about that point where like, you you become like hard to relate to with your parents, but also your parents like struggle to um, struggle to do effective parenting because you're you, like you, they already taught you everything you might need to know as a child, um, or maybe not everything, but uh, they taught you a lot. So what what more can they do? It, it's a it's a weird gap uh, like gap period like before you reach a, adulthood and everyone's like fighting to try to figure each other out. Core also talks about uh, authenticity here, which I think she does a really good job of that. Uh, and so like, I think she's arguing that maybe Cindy's problem uh, comes from uh, like recognizing fake aspects of society. Like maybe it's not so much to do with her parents, but uh, maybe it's more to do with the fact that she's beginning to recognize the, uh, the sort of 
fake aspects of of the culture that she's living in and how things aren't as authentic even though when she was growing up she was taught that you know this is society this is how things are living and she feels that maybe she was lied to or she doesn't have the tools to deal with this world that she's going to be thrust out to in, in a couple of years uh what's really interesting is that um uh core specifically mentions the book franny and zoe a book that i've never read but of course whenever an author mentions a book and they're uh, in their book, like it's important to look that up and see what uh, see what themes it espouses because it can really help you understand maybe what the author's trying to talk about here. And of course, Franny and Zoe is a book about authenticity and a char- characters trying to figure out the world around them as they enter college and whatnot, uh, which is um, a book by J.D. Salinger, someone who was very well known for that. I think a lot of people know him for The Catcher in the Rye, uh, which is a book I haven't talked about on this channel, but I would like to very soon. But um, you can see that if if um, if uh, Cindy was reading this type of book, she might look at the world around her and realize maybe Salinger is kind of right in what he's talking about, how the world doesn't feel authentic. And she might feel these feelings of like um, disillusionment or or depression or angst and, and wonder how she fits into this world that that doesn't that that doesn't feel um, authentic. And this is further felt by Joan when she goes uh, goes outside and experiences these feelings. So uh, if Joan's been dealing for the, dealing with this for quite a while and might have dealt with depression when she was young, like um, like it's 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 probably the case that Cindy is also going through this, which is which is unfortunate. I I, I don't think I ever felt those feelings of disillusionment, but I I, ha- I have recognized that society is is very harmful uh, um, a lot of the time. Uh, but it, one thing that did, does help Cindy in this case is Joan talking to her about the 1970s, noting with Cindy that she felt a little bit of depression and things were very like gaudy and, and extravagant in the 1970s, but um, like she didn't feel that way. Like she was feeling a little disillusionment herself. So letting Cindy know that's normal, that it's okay to see the world this way and you're not different. You're not like a, an outlier that this is sometimes what happens, uh, like that can go a long way to helping Cindy feel that her parents are authentic and being truthful with her about the world. Uh, but it could also, uh, help her and not feeling like a, like, um, like a freak or a, like an outcast in, in high school. Cause it's probably the case that other high schoolers feel this way too. There are a couple of issues that I do have with this this story, as well as a lot of a lot of the stories in um, this collection. She can be very overt at times. It feels like half the stories in here are very overt with this messaging, where Core just comes out and tells you what it's all about, rather than letting the reader find her way there. Which is weird because the other half of the stories, uh, Core is very subtle with the messaging and allowing the readers to find their way to that point uh, with really excellent writing. Um, one of the stories in here called Smile is an example of that uh and um like i i it's not enough to sink this but i do think that um like it is a a noticeable flaw with 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 this story as well as uh, others in this collection and i do think she has sort of vague feminist messaging in this story where she brings up that dennis begins to notice that cindy is changing into womanhood and it's an uncomfortable feeling for him and it's like why is that an uncomfortable feeling for him and why is that more important than, than maybe what cindy is feeling and i think core is trying to push you in that direction but i don't think she does enough work to get you there i feel like if she made the story a little bit longer and flushed out those feelings that it could make the story even better and show that cindy's feelings like are stem not only from inauthenticity but also maybe from the uh the expectations of being a woman in this uh, uh, patriarchal society. Maybe that's not what Core was also trying to say, but she she hints that she is, and so um, I feel like that that point is not fleshed out as well as it could be. Anyway, those are my thoughts on Teenage Hate by Leopoldine Core, uh, a pretty solid uh, short story. Uh, I do think that despite some of the flaws here, this is a short story worth seeking out. Maybe go to your local library and, and find it. Um, it. It also couldn't hurt to to purchase it uh, from your local bookstore if you're able to find it there. Uh, I I do like Leopold Court's writing and I hope I can find more of it in the future. I also hope she writes a more longer format book because I would like to see what other ideas she could throw at the wall. And I do think that she could possibly be um, a good, uh, uh, like, a, a, a good, like, uh, like, protege of, of Salinger 
um, if she was willing. Because this this story shows that she she has the capacity to do that. Uh, so I'd I, I'd really like to see what else she's she's capable of there. Uh, if you read this before, you simply want to comment on something I said here. Do so below. Let's have a discussion about Leopoldine Core in this book. Otherwise, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so that more people can find out about uh, this this book, this short story, or this author if they do not already know. And until then, I wish you the best of luck in your teenage or teenage reminiscent travels. Farewell.